Breaking news. The Sharks figured out how to beat Seattle. More at 11. Hey everybody, welcome in to a puck not ugh, I can't even talk already. I'm just so excited they learned how to beat Seattle. <laughs> welcome to a Pucknologist takeover of After Dark. It's show 153 for us. So we welcome you back to the unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, and commercial free sharks podcast here on Teal Town USA. This time around, we're gonna talk about four Sharks games played this week. A mid-season update from Sharks President Jonathan Becker. Uh, too many injuries to talk about and more, but first remember, hit the subscribe button if you're here on YouTube, follow us on social media, and if you'd like to help support the content we deliver, you can donate using the Super Chat option during live shows, or throw a tip in our Venmo jar whenever, at Teal Town USA, and if you are not watching this YouTube video live, make sure to add your take in the comment section of this video, and Ian will get back to you as soon as he can, because the angry... Canadian robot loves to talk to everybody. The only thing I would ask, though, where's everybody watching from tonight? We want to know. How you guys doing? What up, everybody? What up, jerk? Not much, man. Um, we uh, The technologists are in overtime right now. You know, it's uh, nearly uh, a, a, a full, um, you know, three-hour time change from our normal... <laughs> Uh, time to go on air. I guess we're 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 getting to experience the uh, the Ian Reed method of podcasting, where Dude. you know everything starts super late. About this time, we're we're usually like I don't know what an hour deep into Discord talking about where to get the best pizza slice or something. Yeah, I mean that's accurate. <laughs> so let's go with your weekly wrap. Four games this week. The Sharks go two one and one during those through 53 games so far this season the Sharks are 24, 23 and six good for 54 points. However, the Sharks still remain seventh in the Pacific and in the wild card. And so now eight points out of the division, seven out of the wild card over the last 10 games, two four and four. that's not good. but, Two, two, and one in the last five. That's a little better. Still three, five, and two. Or I'm sorry, now four, five, and two in divisional games. And for my predictions, uh, I went two for four this week. Yay. (laughs) But I did have it that they would win two games this week. I just, I, I don't know. I guess I confused Anaheim and New York. I thought they would have beaten Anaheim and lost to New York. Went the other way around, whatever. But through 53, I had them with 25 wins, and they're at 24. So still pretty close. What do we take from this week's games? Uh, Gregor still can't finish. We learned that versus Anaheim. And it's only boarding if the Sharks do it. Uh, versus New York, we learned that special teams can make a difference, but this time in a good way. Uh, versus Boston, we misplaced our shots on goal. And then, of course, Mario Ferraro out for six to eight weeks and tonight the game we're about to talk about uh sharks tired as fuck in the first period but did snap a streak of eight straight in which they allowed the first goal which was the third longest in team history by the way but a night of first dezingle first goal as a shark scott reedy and gadjevic boom first goals ever so uh let's start with the seattle game jerk man um what can you say about only getting four shots on goal in the first period after having such few shots on goal the night before versus Boston? Yeah, you know what? I'll be totally honest with you right now. Um, if we weren't doing a takeover for this game and it was just going to be like our normal uh, our normal format for the show, I probably would have stopped paying so much attention to this game after the first period because it was – not only was it just – uninteresting you know like like there was no real excitement in the period um but the sharks were very clearly getting outplayed by a team that is so bad (laughs) like horribly bad yeah so i'm like why 
do I care? Why am I watching this? You know, why am I gonna, why am I gonna, you know, pump myself up for an embarrassing loss? You know. Mm-hmm. But like, Reimer gets his twelfth straight start. Like you said, dude, Seattle comes into this on a six-game losing streak, and after that first period, you have to be going. Are you kidding me with this? Can, okay, you know what I find to be really obnoxious, and the only reason I mention it right now is because it was said quite a bit during this game. <clears throat> you know, everybody is saying, "Oh, Reimer, twelfth straight start. Reimer, twelve. You know, this many starts in a row. Betty's going to go on Tuesday against Vegas." Like, <laughs> I understand the Sharks are not a playoff team, but that's how starting goalies work. Mm-hmm. You know, like. You go back, you go back like the last forever, right? Like Martin Jones being the prime example, you know, 34 of 56 last year, uh, 41 of uh, 41 of 70 two years ago, 62 of 82 three years ago. Like, why is it all of the sudden this insane idea that your starting goalie get most of the starts? Well, and there's all this thing about, oh, 12 straight starts. Okay, I, I look at it as more of seven straight starts because dude was off for two weeks. Well, and I bet you I bet you two-thirds of the leagues, I bet you every goalie this year on a team that has a, an undisputed starter has seen that many starts in a row. Like, that's not some, that's not some crazy talking point. Yeah, <laughs> certainly not unheard of. Like... Hey, did you hear this guy notorious for scoring goals? He scored. <laughs> but clearly something, I don't know, I guess changed. I don't know if it was the the fight that happened, if if that it, certainly Bugner had to have been like, "Look, if you guys aren't going to like, I don't know, try to find scoring chances, at least go out there and pummel them so they feel this on the way home, like do something." Sharks did that. The Sharks had yeah, thirty-two hits in this game. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. It's you know, I was expecting Bugner to just scream at them after the, at, at the first intermission, like you know, look, these next two periods, Grubauer better see more rubber than a porn star. Okay, like get the shots on goal. What are you waiting on? And you know, that's uh, Drew talked about. You know, the team's fatigued. This is what five in the last eight or whatever. Okay. I guess I'll give you that. Again, they were off for two weeks. But... The, the, that's the thing. There have been, you know, there's been plenty of time. I understand it's a condensed schedule, you know, especially right now during the month of February. But to your point, they had so much time off, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was it? Uh, you got guys going to, like, Cancun, Mazatlan. I mean, they were all over the place. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So... And you know what? Well-deserved, sure, too. Sure, You know, I... I, I, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, how how dare you uh, go on vacation on your day off? You know, I'm not one of those people. Yeah. Um, how dare you not spend all your time in the gym? Y- exactly. Um, you know what? I, I'll tell you what, though. The second and third period of this game was vastly different, you know, from, yeah. from the first period. I think it goes without saying. I'm... I'm kind of with you, you know, the that line of guys, right? Gadjevich, Weatherby, VL, you know, they... You know, they were assigned the task. Hey, you know what? You Like you said, you know, you need to run some guys over tonight. And Gadjevich had four hits. VL had uh, three. So And a fight. And a fight, yeah. So, you know, clearly the uh, message was received. And, and, and as an aside as well, I think the last two games, I know there, there's been some conversation as to why certain players are even in the lineup. But <laughs> the last two games, I, I've... I've not hated Jonah Gadjevich being in the lineup. Like I, I, I like what he brings physically, but I think he was skating pretty exceptionally uh, these last two games. I thought he had a decent amount of scoring chances. He had a shot on goal uh, tonight against the Kraken, and last night against the Bruins, he uh, he had a shot on goal as well. So, yeah, you know, you're looking at one shot, right? But from what I can remember, pretty you know, pretty good chances. And I felt like he had some jump to his game. So, you know, I, for all that's said about who should or should not be in the lineup, I, I didn't hate him in the lineup these last two games. I completely agree with you. 
It was uh, it definitely it got more entertaining. It was like almost the coffee kicked in a little bit mm-hmm. later. Or the, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, wait a minute, a Sunday? We're not used to playing on Sundays. What is this? But <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, uh, the, and then the only other call out I had, of course, was I, I don't understand how Guru Bauer gets away with that trip. But uh, <laughs> dude, that was brutal. I and and you know what? Actually, I did have a call out as well. I I, I don't know if the Teal Town account gifted or not, um, but. It was, I believe it was in the first period, uh, where you know Don Scoy is you know the guy that the Sharks should have kept, depending on who you ask, right? <laughs> you know, uh, Don Scoy is, you know, coming into the zone and he pulls a little spin move, and uh, you know Malosh is like, no, 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 not here. You're not doing that. <laughs> Get Basically, that weak shit out of here. Yeah, one arm just like shoved him down. I'm like, that's. You know, that's what you get. You know, I we, we, we say it all the time. That's what you get for being a hero, right? <laughs> My like, man. You're going to act a fool out here. Somebody's going to somebody's gonna tap you on the laces and say, hey, knock it off. Or you're going to get pushed down like that. Yeah, I still... You know, you're, you're pulling a spinorama zone entry when it's freaking zero to zero. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> get that weak shit out of here. Yeah, it was, <sighs> a, hero mo- it was a hero move. Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from that, there's really just not much to go on. It's a, you know, again, it's it's a tired Sharks team. Took them forever to get shots on goal, but as the game wore on, it seemed like they started to get their second wind. Mm-hmm. Had a little more oomph again, like we talked about. The physical component seemed to be the trigger. But look, they they finally beat Seattle. They they finally got a win. It seemed like it's <laughs> like, or I should say, a win in regulation. Uh, yeah, no kidding. But which I don't, I can't even remember the last one of those. So uh, it is what it is. Let's. Uh, you know, you know what? I something I noticed as well. I I I really liked. Um, I really liked Nick Benino's game tonight. You know, he was he was on the goal or on the ice. Excuse me for Geeky's goal. But three blocks tonight, three takeaways. Like on the other side of the puck, he was very good. And mm-hmm. you know, I know people like to complain, but that's why you have him. You know. Yeah. Um. I really like Nick Benino's game tonight, and I thought, you know, it, it, it's funny during the first period, and I'm sure you saw. You know, I threw onto our shared note, you know, and we'll we'll get into it. So I'm not going to fully tease it, but you know, player X and Y are on my stock down list, and then you know, <laughs> player X and Y ended up, you know, they they were buzzing there, you know, toward you know, in the middle and the end of the game. We'll get into that, but I just thought that was funny. Maybe that's, you know, maybe maybe our um manifesting that we do on the podcast maybe it ex- it extends to our shared note as well could happen i want to know when reedy found out he was getting the start tonight oh, dude it was probably <laughs> it was probably it was dude it was probably when dolan rolled up to the arena and bugner was like dude that tie sucks you're not playing tonight ah <laughs> <Huh. sighs> All right, let's get to uh, the beginning. I, of... I can only assume that's Bugner's rationale. It certainly can't be about play. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's start with the beginning of the week. Sharks at Anaheim. It's a 4-3 shootout loss. Uh, first meeting of the season against the Ducks. Uh, they had come in with one win in their last five games. Uh, here's a game where Dolan gets scratched. Yet another one. Uh, and Merkley. hi yo. <laughs> hmm. Uh, this game really bothered me. What was it? The neutral zone turnovers? What was it? <laughs> it, it it's just the fact. I mean, yeah, you look right. F- fifteen, uh, fifteen giveaways by the Sharks, and you know, three by Timo Meyer. Um, you know, it's just <sighs> there's been so many games this year, right? And and we don't like to play the what if game on this podcast, but it, it's hard not to take a look at this game against Anaheim and some other games uh, from earlier in the season and just say, you know. You had your hand around their throat, and you squandered it. Mm-hmm. Like how many of these games throughout the whole season? Maybe we'll do this. We'll when when we do the uh, you know when we do the autopsy on this failed season in about you know ten weeks. We'll we'll talk about it. But what? How many games were the Sharks in the driver's seat and then you know drove off a cliff? You know this is certainly one of them. You're up two to one. You're up three to two. Your top guys are buzzing, like. Burns was getting regularly sewered on Twitter and he had a hell of a game against the Ducks and it was you know it kind of feels like it was for nothing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, 
I mean, the, the story of that, of course, being is that Balsers and Dezingo both took dangerous hits. No mm-hmm. call, you know, against the boards, no call. Uh, Balsers would miss the rest of that period. For those of you who don't know, uh, I, if, if memory serves, Balsers was placed on IR earlier today, correct? Correct. And I, I imagine it was... I don't know. I imagine it it would be retroactive to that game against Anaheim, which was on uh, February 22nd. But if they only just did it now, maybe he's, you know, maybe it was the situation where they thought he could go and then realized they can't. But regardless, you know, he's going to miss the next couple of games. You know, he didn't play yesterday or today, obviously. I don't know. I don't know what his injury, his IR posting date is, but Whatever it is, he's at least out a week from that date. Yeah. Uh, Alex in the chat saying, uh, I was a little bit behind in the postgame interview. Reedy said he got the call two hours before game time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and that that's cr- that's tough, too, because you think about how, like, how very strict player schedules are. You know, they go in the morning, they skate, they eat something, mm-hmm. you know, they eat something kind of, you know, kind of big, you know, get, you know, like, eight scrambled eggs or like, you know, an entire bowl of like tortellini or something, something that's really going to, you know, fill you up. You take a nap and it's like, I don't know, like for all we, like what if Reedy was like, what if he was like playing PlayStation? He's like, what? I have to go down there. Like, <laughs> well, did, you know what I mean? Did the, no Cuda prep, play no last, one... did the Cuda play last night? Oh, geez. See? You know what? They might have. Yeah. That's what I was kind of wondering. I'm like, Oh my God. If the Cuda played last night, yowza. That's a, and that's the thing, right? Is like he, you know, the normal prep that you have in a game day, your meal, your nap, your skate, all that stuff. You know, as as far as as far as I'm, you know, what I'm assuming, considering how quick that call came, you know, Reedy had none of that, right? So the fact that he got a goal, Ugh. you know, well, a game winning high value goal, I might add. We'll get <laughs> into it. Uh, Dana is saying, I don't think it was a failed season, um, a mess season with some highlights, but a lot of wasted opportunities. Uh, yeah, for me, it's the, uh, how many times have we talked about how, what a difference a power play goal would have made in a game? Oh, absolutely. And, and I know we're going to get into it as well. You know, I, I, I was, you know, I saw your notes about comparing this season to the last two, but you know, I, I agree with Dana, you know, there, you know, there are a couple things you can look at, especially, and, and we've talked about it all year, right? The sharks are. The shark stats and record wise, the sharks are pretty similar to what they were last year with a worse roster, you know? Mm-hmm. So makes you think. Uh the the special teams, this is another one, you know, they lose four three in the shootout, but they went one for five on the power play. And like you said, two <laughs> for two for one or, or I'm sorry, a two two one lead in the game, hand on the throat, can't can't pull it off. Uh, it's just, uh, and then Raquel tying it off the faceoff was kind of demoral- your buddy, it's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you know Couture did give the Sharks the lead, and that did come from the power play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, but Raquel he had two in this one, and his his tie or his tally to make it three three. That for me, that was one Reimer needed to stop. But you know, it's another one right off the faceoff. But of course, everybody's going to give rhymes a pass because it's be like, well, this is his 118th game straight. So <laughs> he he he's playing the work road of, workload of a normal NHL goalie. Give him a break. <laughs> I still don't understand though how Schmidt can board Troy Terry nearly identical to the boarding Balser's got, and suddenly at that now it's a penalty. Mm-hmm. And and for all the talk of accountability, the refs somehow never held to account. I don't know. Oh. Dude, I've I've gotten into it so much so many times. You can you can find clips on YouTube of referees and linesmen telling players to go fuck themselves yep. and nothing. But, you know, the you know, the the one that comes to mind, I think it might have been Bruce Boudreaux when he was on Minnesota uh, a couple of years ago where it's like, "Well, I wasn't a fan of that cross-checking penalty." Boom, 20,000 fine. Yeah. It's like, "Come on, man." Yeah, the fact that you can never say anything remotely critical of the official is just like, you know, we talk about the NHL being like this, uh, all the chirping that happens and that how tough, how war, these guys are warriors. You think about all this stuff, yet the refs are have like the most delicate egos of like a, a five-year-old girl, you know? It's like, calm down. 
Someone said, you know what? You missed a call or you didn't get one right. Hey, you got a lot of other ones, right? Just not this one. Don't don't cry about it. Crying in the club, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but th- the one thing I guess you can kind of take from it is that in the entire overtime, the sh- or the Ducks never got a shot off on goal. <laughs> like, at least that was impressive. Um, so, anyway... Let's move on to the Islanders game. This it and a real weird coincidental thing. The Sharks lose four three, win four three, lose three one, win three one. I don't know. Very odd. Um, second meeting versus the Islanders. You'll remember the Sharks won two to one in overtime back on November second. The Isles came into this two zero and one in their last three games, but overall a worse record than the Sharks. Uh, this one, again, Balser's out because of the injury. Uh, Gadjevic is scratched. And then, of course, we know Hill and Carlson, they're out. Uh, Schimmick got scratched. It's such a yo-yo for, you know, <laughs> just, just – I mean, I don't even know how they put together the blue line at this point. <laughs> this is, okay, who can walk? Okay, you're in. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? This At least this means – that you know we're gonna see more of Merkley, right? I know, obviously Ferraro going down. That's not what the Sharks want, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Bob has been hesitant to get Merkley in there, and you know this week he at least tried to, you know, acknowledged that it's it's situational, whatever that means. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's I don't know. I just. I, I agree with you. It's it, the the blue line has been different every night, and it's like, how are you supposed to have any kind of chemistry, organization, success, consistency? Like, pick a verb out of a hat, right? Like, <laughs> well, dude, this is coming in from uh, our buddy Shang, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Bookner kind of letting it all hang out for the uh, post game against Seattle. It says he shamed the Sharks into playing better. Wow. Uh, this is after Reimer was forced to make 18 saves in the first period. You told them, he Reimer's playing the majority of January and all of February for you guys. He's played hard. He has never complained. It's time for you to play for him. Right. And you, and Kaboom. I'll bet you, I'll bet you too, you know, in the locker room when Bob is saying that, the type of guy that Reimer is, Reimer's probably like, oh God, like it, it, it's fine. Like I'm just doing my job. Don't, don't mention me, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is so fun. Dude, how many times do we like kind of, uh, I don't want to say pontificate, but maybe speculate on something and, mm-hmm. we, and we get it right? Dude, yeah. l- listen to this. What did you just say? Oh, I um, know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Sharks forward Scott Reedy found out a couple hours before the game that he was needed at SAP Center because Dolan was feeling ill. So, okay, it wasn't a scratch thing. Uh, and you would kind of think it wouldn't be, you know, you're not calling a guy in last minute if you're right. healthy scratching somebody. But Reedy was at home with two of his roommates, uh, Chichek and Gallant, or Gallant, whichever, uh, but chilling out watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> watching TV, quote, PlayStation. But anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, we said that, what, 10 minutes ago? <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, for the Islanders game... Uh, that was the one where you just go special teams, mofo. You know, yeah, dude, two, two for two on the power play. Yeah, three for three on the kill. I mean, gotta love it. Uh, Barabanov, your boy, hitting that power play. I I, I gotta give. I want to give a shout out to Corey. Uh, you know, he how like I've you know how long have we been talking about it? Right, we were saying, well, you know, look at what Barabanov is doing. Look at his contract. You know. If I'm a team who thinks they can win the cup, I'm sniffing around this guy, right? Mm-hmm. And Corey, I saw Corey mention earlier, like, you know, very eloquently broke it down. Like, like if you don't you think know, he's a top six guy, I don't know what you're smoking. Yeah, exactly. Basically saying, like, this is what Barbanov brings to the table. This is, you know, this these are the things he's doing that, you know, like you said, shows why he should be there. And so it's it's nice. As, as much as I don't want barabanov to obviously be traded away i think if you're looking at it strictly from a uh from an asset management position you know if you're gonna get a guy for an ahl or you're not using and then you you know a year later you can flip him for a second round pick dude (laughs) dude 
how how does this happen? How do we end up with this guy? Maybe the uh, you know it was with the Leafs, right, Suomela? Yeah, dude. Dude, Su- how, dude, how does that happen? Suomela, dude. I'll tell you this: Suomela is not even on an NHL deal. He's on an AHL deal with the Leafs farm team. <sighs> Granted, having a good year in the AHL, but Barabanov is having a good year in the NHL. <laughs> Oh, dude, this is good. So <laughs> Shang tweeting <laughs> uh, that uh, it was a good thing that uh, evidently it says Dolan came in today about 4.30, not feeling well. Sharks had to scramble to find a 12 forward. Good thing Reedy hadn't gone into San Francisco like some of his CUDA teammates. This is, I was just laying on the couch with my roommates, hanging out, watching some sports or or playing sports games on PlayStation. We're, we're, we're just going to stick with that. Hey, whatever. <clears throat> That's the thing. If it's your day off, do whatever you want. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, dude, so Barabanov, they, also Weatherby. Uh, you got VL dropping it against Zdeno Chara. Really? He's I mean, got some big He's got some big ones, eh? Oh, boy. That's a tall tree to chop down. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And this is one where Dolan got sent down to the fourth line. Gregor gets put up to the second because <laughs> somebody's going to figure out a way to get this guy a goal. Hey, you know what? He had two shots on Gregor, two shots on goal last night, five hits, a block. No stats, but he was playing well. Or yeah. no, I should say points, but you know, I thought he had a good game. Uh Malosh, you'll remember this is the one where he went out just under five left in the first after taking an elbow to the to the dome. And mm-hmm. so, you know, credit to the Sharks that they essentially have to uh <laughs> I mean they're they're playing 40, 45 minutes of this game. No, forty five, that's not right. No, that's right. Well, yeah, Mal- forty-five Mal- minutes of this Malosh- game. Malosh only clocked four twenty-eight in this game. Yeah, so forty-five minutes of the game, having to you know go with five D. That's that's not easy. Ugh, Burns thirty minutes. Ferraro twenty-eight minutes. <laughs> Middleton and Vlasic at twenty-two. <laughs> oh my god! The one thing that gets me though is, is that Nieto had to fight after a real clean hit. I believe was it on Pelic. Yeah, that yeah, sounds dude. right. And then, and all of a sudden, Nieto has to answer the bell for a clean hit. I'm, dude, I'm so goddamn sick of this. You know, Me too. A dirty I, hit, fine. But, dude, you know, you, you stop. We got to stop fighting just because you got drilled clean. Just take the number, wait your turn. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It was it was the hit on Pelic, but then it was uh, it was Pajot that ended up challenging him. But no, I, I agree with you. Like. You know, if you don't want to get like, you know, if you if you don't want to get hit by the train, get off the tracks, you know, like but I'm just that, it comes with the territory like you're going to get blown up at times. And like you said, you take the number and next chance you get to blow up their guy, you do it. Yeah, I just I get tired of seeing guys have to answer a bell for a clean hit. Was, oh, you hit me too hard. Well, go go play flag hockey. <laughs> is that such a thing? <laughs> uh, in this one, and and of course we mentioned this, uh, we've been doing it all season long, and we will talk about it later in this one. Uh, tickets sold, 11,283. Again, tickets sold, probably not tickets used. So, Sharks versus Boston. Here's a 3-1 loss. Uh, second time versus Boston. You'll remember back in October, the Sharks lost in Beantown 4-3 allowing a power play goal, yet going 0 for 2 on the power play. So, again, another one of those games where it's like, boy, power play goal would have been nice. It's another difference maker. Uh, Bruins come into this on a three-game winning streak, including an absolute 5-1 curb stomp of the avalanche. You don't see that mm-hmm. very often. Uh, and this one, Cogliano is a last-minute scratch. Dolan would go in for him. So, this is another one I think Dolan was going to get scratched, but for whatever reason, Cogliano had to bail. Have you well, heard so, any reason why? Uh, the It's just personal issues. Okay, then. That's the official, uh, you know, thing. But he, I, I don't even want to get into it, but I know he had some personal issues earlier, so hopefully everything's cool with him. Yeah, um, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but I, you know, so here, so let me tell you a little thing. So uh, we, um, we were out at dinner last night, and so the game started right as we were wrapping up, right? So I, you know, on the car ride home, you know, I threw, pulled up my uh, Sharks Plus SAP Center app, and I pulled up and I pulled up the audio network. No free um, ads. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm j- I just want to use the proper terminology. Um, 
you know, pulled up the audio network and uh, listened to some bullshit 90 second commercial before the game uh, got on. And, um, you know, I think within a span of three minutes, Rusinowski and Smith are saying, Dolan, 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 Dolan. And I'm like, guy is not playing. What are we talking about here? <laughs> not not realizing that Cogliano ended up coming out of the lineup. So I'm just listening. I'm like, don't tell me the Hedekin has rubbed off on Rusey now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, I, you know, my, my fiance is like, well, maybe he's playing today. And I'm like, no, 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 way. no he's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, he was. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Sharks go one for four on the power play. That includes a double minor because Hurdle took a high stick from Hala early in the first. Uh, and they only get off two shots on goal during that. Both from the yeah. second unit. Oof. Well, and, and, and you, you talk about accountability. I, I did like how in the post game, uh, media for this game, Burns came out and said like, yeah, that four minute power play was ass basically. You know, I mean, he didn't say it exactly like that, but he might as well have, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, halfway through this game, five on five shots on goals, Boston 17, San Jose 2. Last time I looked, that that that's not going to win you a lot of games. No, <sighs> no, it does not. Uh, Meyer would tie it on the power play after Hall put Ferraro into the boards. We all know Morrow needed help off the ice after getting his ankle tied up with the board, and... That looked painful, dude. Dude, Couture said he heard him scream. Have you ever broken your leg before? <sighs> no, and I don't think I want to. I haven't either, but, like, you you think about the... Um, <laughs> so we you cannot about... <laughs> talk... We cannot <laughs> talk intelligently about this. <laughs> right, but you, you think about the biology and the, you know, and the physiology of all that, right? Like, what that breaking your leg entails. Like... I feel like in that situation, like you, <laughs> you'd have to bring me like a box of Kleenex. Like I'd probably be crying. Like that shit sounds painful, oh, dude. In the club, <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> you know. So when Couture says, you know, he heard Ferraro screaming because Ferraro is tough. Like oh, he's dude. a tough customer. And so like if he's screaming, like you know, it's bad news. Yeah. And so it came out earlier today. He's gonna miss six to eight weeks. And you're like, ah, f like. Man, can we enough with the injuries already? We get it. Like, well, so let me, let me ask you this. So, based based on that timeline, uh, you know, according to that, Ferraro could be ready to go again between April tenth and twenty fourth. I just and the end of the season is what the 29th? April twenty ninth. So it's, <laughs> it's like, like dude, at, why? at that point, is it worth it? Yeah, shut him down. Yeah, Sh I would just. You're, you're, look, you're not going to the playoffs. By the time he's back, I, you know, I'm going to assume that there's the, when you look at the standings on NHL.com, they're already going to have the little E next to their name. <laughs> well, not only, not only that, dude, but let, think about it like this as well. They, they say, oh, six to eight weeks. Is that six to eight weeks before he can start skating or is that six to eight weeks before he's going to get back into a game? Exactly. You know? I, I would say before skating. So I, I hate to say it, but I think Ferraro is done for, you know, done for the regular season. Yeah. Um, Shut him down. Yeah, I would. I mean, you, there's no benefit to that aside, like for, uh, from a salary cap perspective, really. The only real benefit from that is letting him focus on healing. Yep. So you got it. Uh, let's see here. So for this one, uh, Here's the cool thing. It's, it's Did the Sharks lose to Boston? Yeah. Okay, it sucked. However, if you went to the game or watched it on TV, the fun part, of course, was watching the Sharks logo designer, Terry Smith, go out there mm -hmm. in his the teal tote jersey that he designed, drops that first puck. Uh, just very cool to see him out there. Uh, now, here's a couple things, though. So they, they it was a... Well, it was Black History Night, right? Correct. So, they have their their special warm up jerseys that they're going to auction. I've never seen this before. Fifth, they put up forty jerseys. I've also never seen them put up that many jerseys. They had, uh, like God, what's the cat name I said earlier? I don't even know how to pronounce it. Gallant, Gallant. Was oh, that, was Gallant, that? Zach Gallant. Okay, yeah, I believe he was one of the guys on there, and it's like, why? I know Hataka had a jersey. Yeah. D did, um, did Raska? Yeah, he did. Yeah, like there was a uh, Kinejov? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like honestly, they probably whip up a jersey for everybody who's played a game this year. Oh yeah, yeah. And I get it because if back when they were selling these, like, and and they were they were selling pretty well, sure. But holy shit, dude! F- of the forty they put up for auction last night, fourteen or I'm sorry, fifteen did not sell, including Mark Edward Vlasic. Yeah, and only. To, they all started at five hundred dollars. Only two of the ones that sold sold for more than six hundred. How many times have you and I gone back and forth? We're rubbing our hands together, going, "Dude, that jersey looks pretty tight." I'm, I'm eyeballing that bare band off, or what? You know, and then all of a sudden it hits eight hundred, and you're like, "I'm out." Yep. That only two went over 600 and i'm not even sure which ones they were i you would assume it would be like i don't know couture i know burns and, burns was one of them okay the, i would assume the other would be couture probably or maybe hurdle yeah but i think i saw hurdle at 625 but i don't want to confirm that yeah but yikes it just I, it, go ahead. is this another thing that like fans are like sick of getting priced out you know what i mean, Could or, be. I mean or is it just that it was an unappealing design because i gotta tell you the the logo on the front okay so it's like okay we're just going to make it all like kind of this like electric teal mm-hmm. you know the stick the teeth everything kind of a little bit of a bland logo especially when you compare it to Seattle's black history jersey or uh Vancouver's in particular that was mm, chef's kiss and and then the back the numbers on the back it was just like yeah black number white outline there you go just uh, you know it lacked i'm just lacked I'm, pizzazz i just think like i mean i still like i'm looking at it right now and i it's a decent sweater i think it's a decent sweater but man i thought it would have been much cooler if you know if they had worn terry's oh dude yes absolutely dude i think you would have sold a, a ton of them that way for a higher price or the other thing is I think it would have helped if the numbers and, you know, the back had more pop. Dude, go look at the numbers for the back of uh, Seattle's Black History Month jersey or Vancouver's. Vegas had a solid one from what I remember. They, they were okay. I thought the crest sucked, but the numbers were were cool. Mm-hmm. But it was just – either way, I was, just, I was so disappointed in this. Hey, but. speaking of disappointed, I know this is – I, I wanted to mention this earlier because I had mentioned it before and I felt obligated to mention it again. Um, and it was Kevin who reminded me. So it, this is the third game. Tonight's game was the third game of the season against the Kraken, right? Mm-hmm. Randy Hahn. Uh-oh. I love you, buddy. Love you, Randy. Uh, here we go. Still has not figured out how to say Jeremy Lausanne's name. How does he say it? Well, and I and <clears throat> you go back and listen to our podcast after the first game and the second game, both games, I mentioned it. Tonight we heard Lausanne, Lausanne, Lausanne. He said it correctly, and then it was Lozen. And <laughs> Kevin also said Lausanne, which I believe is a city in Switzerland, not close. Um, oh man, yeah. So that that's kind of my, been my running tally this year. Is like, will Randy Hahn say Jeremy Lausanne's name correctly? <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it's been every game. Every game, there's been like seven pronunciations. Uh, and it's like, dude, hockey reference or even the media sheet, dude, they have pronunciation guides. Uh, yeah, but to be fair, the the, the hockey pronunciation guide, completely wrong with uh, Hobgawax. Well, whatever. So I'm just saying. Uh, what did I see? Alex asked if they had a, a jersey for Kane. No, they did not. And st- yeah, dude, dude, it was in the dumpster, didn't you hear? <laughs> Skyler challenging me to make a better Black History Month jersey. Uh, I, I don't think I could do any worse. Wake Puck Guy up from his slumber. Yeah, no doubt. Somebody hit him up. Uh, so the other thing, too, that happened, uh, also, too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing that happened on this was, man, was there a lot made of the tickets sold for this game. You know, it was all this, oh, 17,260, you know, it's going to, okay, first off, and here was the funny thing, is that, it, I think it was in the first period, maybe, it was not, no, I'm sorry, it was in the second period, because that's when they start to put out the number, mm-hmm. uh, Randy referred to it as, a, you know, a sold out shark tank, 
the next period. Just short of a sellout. <laughs> so, <laughs> Everybody got up and left. Yeah. But now the, the thing that just gets me, of course, is that they're they're screaming from the mountaintops like 17 260. Okay, yeah, it's awesome. That's great. L- let me remind you of a few things. Let's let's offer some context. Number one, uh, did you notice how many Bruins fans were in the house? You could hear it, dude. You this, could hear it. This is what I'm saying. It's like it's a Saturday night. Bruins fans travel well, and this is another chance for somebody to get a giveaway at the door. So far, I think they've given away three jerseys, I want to say. Is that right? Like Black History, there has to have been already a Los Tibs, right? Los Tiburones. And I thought there might have been Hockey one. Hockey fights cancer? Yeah, you right. So the And what's funny is you go and look, I'm pretty sure those three games – are the ones that have the most attendance. So ask ask me if I'm shocked. Uh, are you shocked? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, our boy coming in with the with the with, with he got numbers here, peeps. So got that numbers. Hurdle sold for for eight hundred. Weatherby for six hundred. Well, yeah, but like I said, yeah. So look, look at Weatherby. That. Weatherby is also. I will tell you this. Weatherby is a pretty public ally, so that doesn't surprise me. Oh, okay. Well, let me yeah. put this back up here. Weatherby six hundred, Middleton six hundred, Ferraro six hundred, Couture six fifty, Dolan six hundred, Burns six hundred. Are you kidding me? That those only went for a hundred over asking hundred. You know, like usually, dude, Burns. That's you know that's gonna go get like a thousand. Mm-hmm. Or oh man, yeah, it blows me away. Blows me away. Um. And Jerry, of course, pointing out, given the attendance issues, the Sharks should probably do a giveaway after every home game <laughs> or, or at, at every yeah. home game. Yeah, you're right. Vegas year one style. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, this is the one. Thank you so much, Sharks last. Sharky's birthday jersey. Mm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know what? Those warm-ups? Yeah. I I wasn't a big fan. I thought they could have done a better job on the crest. I thought the artist mm-hmm. the the artistry was kind of parochial, but. I know words. Ah, I know. Uh, so anyway, that's that's my call out for uh, for the Boston I, game. I got I got one more call out. Yeah, call it out. Uh, and I and I do want to say real quick, this is for Kevin's benefit. Um, Jeremy Swayman, good game for the Boston Bruins. I kind of want to give a give a wink to Kevin when I say that. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, <laughs> and I know you're gonna know where I'm going with this as soon as I say it. Swayman hasn't been tested much tonight, but that was a good test there, and he passed the test. Jesus Christ. Say test again, I dare you. <laughs> I know you had one, too. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Can we move on now? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's get into the fun part. Yeah. Uh, what, is that talking about Hedekin or something else? No. Uh, oh so, so what did we learn this week? Right. Okay. Uh, first off, I-, I keep hearing that some people are saying that, you know, the Sharks are doing better than expected. I, I don't think they are. <laughs> they have one right-handed shot. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, that doesn't mean anything, though. Yeah. Uh, if anything, I think, look, I'd say this team fights harder, plays for each other much more than last season. Uh, but, you know, even with league average goaltending, results largely the same. So, for me, the lesson is this team just doesn't have enough talent at forward. You've mentioned it, I don't know how many times. It's like, how great would it be to not have – a fourth line playing on the third line. Yeah. Fourth line playing on the third line, AHL top line playing on the fourth line. You've got, you know, I would say, you know, half of your defensemen are all bottom pairing defensemen. Yeah, no kidding. Hold on, let me address Skyler real quick. He's saying maybe the Sharks expected the economy to be better at this point, but honestly, lots of fans still don't have money. I, I agree with you. That being said, so far this season, the Black History Month jerseys are by far th- the worst that they've had. Sharky ones sold. There's a few that sold for like over a thousand. And I didn't like the, the Sharky ones. ones. I I just didn't like the crest. I mm-hmm. like the numbers. I like the names. You know, I like the fonts and all that. I just didn't like the crest. But it's all subjective. I just think- I do want to say real quick about the point you just made. Same results. Like I mentioned it earlier. Same results, worse roster. I think that's worth saying. Um, Proof is in the pudding, dude. Proof is in the pudding. Well, hold on. When you say worst roster, you're obviously not talking about 
Martin Jones. No, I the you, four. You're it, talking it, about the, the forwards. The forward, yeah. like the forwards, are worse. Yes, but goaltending like, is better. Evander Kane is gone. Say what you want about Ryan Donato. Ryan Donato brought more to the table than who's been. Ryan Donato's brought more to the table than Andrew Cogliano this year. Now that said, Cogliano has <laughs> or brought Gregor. <laughs> or Gregor or VL or Peterson or Gadjevich or Nieto. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. I it's worth saying what Cogliano has provided this year. I think is at worst exactly what we need from him. So I I don't begrudge Cogliano at all. I begrudge Bob for playing a player like Cogliano in an elevated position. Yeah, and and just to okay, I'm gonna put the uh, the final nail in the coffin on the whole jersey thing. Uh, the other thing is you can't again. We know about the the finances and stuff, but the thing is, it's not that you have to show up to to pick up these jerseys now. It's all online. So some huge fan of like Jasper Weatherby from the Midwest can go and like slide in and pick that up, have it shipped to him. So anyway, stock up, stock down. Uh, James Reimer, stock up, buddy. I don't know when you're going to get yeah. a, I don't know when you're going to game, going to get a game off, but yeah. Uh, what was his, um, say percentage tonight anyway? If you could look uh, that up, because yeah, tonight Reimer save percentage nine seventy five. Hi, he saved he saved thirty nine out of forty shots. Oh, you love to see it. Previous five games nine sixteen. So you throw that on the fire. Oh, well, that's the thing. You look like nine nine nineteen in a loss against Boston. Nine thirty six in a win with a lot of goals that went to a shootout. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, 897 in a loss, but even then, 897, it's not like he got totally cratered, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, Brent Burns, stock up. Dude, you like, yeah. you you lead this week in points, man. You got a goal, five assists. I feel so bad. I feel so bad for Shang because Shang's mentions got murdered with people complaining about Burns and <laughs> you could tell Shang was like one at a time with your questions please <laughs> I felt so bad for Shang but you know what I think the people you know I know uh Nick has called out uh Burns a lot we've called out Burns a lot the, you know locked on every Sharks podcast is calling out Burns many are you trying to say many people yeah, many people are saying, but you know what? The last, I, I want to say maybe the last two games, you know, Boston and the Kraken, I thought Burns came to play. You know, I, I was texting um, I was texting with a good buddy of mine last night about the game, and I said, uh, you know, we, we were talking specifically about Burns, right, and just how everybody's calling him out and then, you know, kind of what's going to be the response. And I, I texted him. I said, Burns actually looks decent tonight. Of course, the one time he's open for chances, nobody can get him the puck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's just, I don't know. But Lacey rolling in with stats. A goalie with a 2.84 goals against should not have a, 19, a 9.16 save percentage, and that's why he's the Sharks MVP to me. Yeah, dude, it's it's the Mike Smith effect. Like, you look at Mike Smith's stats, like – He'd let in three, four, five goals a game, but then he would get fifty saves. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Dana sliding in. What is she listening to me? Because how many times have I said this? She's saying Burns always pops off when Carlson isn't in the lineup. I don't know if we should read into that or not. Didn't I, I mention? We... Didn't I like talk about that for a while when Ek was out with COVID and Burns just like was, yeah, he on, was on a heater. Oh, dude, he was on such a heater, and as soon as Carlson came back, dude, ice cold. Maybe we should trade Burns to a roster that doesn't have Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I think that's a nat like that's a natural thing you'd see, right? Where it's like, you know, know, when when they're both together, you know, they gotta, you know, they gotta share they gotta share the load, right? When if one's gone, you know, the onus kind of falls on the other, right? No, I feel you on that, but I mean, because the first few games that Carlson was out, Burns actually wasn't playing that well. He's just turned it on in the last week or so. I wouldn't even say the last week. I would say the last two games. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I literally think it's been Boston and Seattle. Right. And we'll see. Tuesday against Vegas, I'm going to be there, so we'll see. Oh, the jerk bump. Yep. I'll always account for Three the Three-zero win. <laughs> uh, Logan Couture, stock up. Four-game point streak right now. And Can I? I just want to say, that's go some, ahead. That's somebody who's needed it because Couture's been a little MIA of late. 
But has he? Uh, scotch. But well, he's, maybe it has to do with who he's being played with. But because he never knows if Dolan's around. He's he's <laughs> Couture's third on. He's third on the team in scoring. He's been despite his brutal slump he was going through. Um, you know the 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 two or three weeks prior to this week. Despite all that, like still leading the team in scoring, still on pace to match his career average for points. People talked about people talk about how Couture, you know, he he's a bad player, bad captain, he's washed up, this, that, and the other. Dude, Couture is uh, hot take. Couture is playing better as well or better than Hurdle this year. Ho! Fight me. Like <laughs> Man, get your that, gloves. Get your gloves to take that out of the hot takery bakery. Yeah, dude. All right, come at him on Twitter. You know where it is. <laughs> uh, stock up special teams. Dude, the power play goal, they scored a power play goal in three straight games this week. PK hasn't allowed a power play goal since February 1st. Yeah, man. So, special teams. Uh, is there any other stock up for you before we go to the fun part? Uh, <laughs> mm hmm. No, because that's the thing. I mean, aside from tonight's game and the game against the Islanders, the Sharks have been largely uninspiring, right? Like, there's been there's been pockets that have been good, but it's been largely, you know, uninteresting play. I think, you know, you know, especially in the games where the Sharks ended up winning, the Islanders and the Kraken, the Sharks were miles ahead of the opposing team and blocked shots, which I think. I look at that as a commitment to winning. So maybe as a whole, you know, you can just say like you're blocking more shots. Obviously, you know, that helps contribute to winning. So stock down. <laughs> Jonathan Dolan dude. figure out whatever Bugner wants and do that shit. Yeah, he ran out. He, he clearly wore the wrong tie and, you know, Bob's mad at him now. Like scratched in two of four, but then falls sick. And you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, fourth on the team in goals. <laughs> Keep them humble. Granted, I will say this, he's, uh, despite the fact that he's played most of the season with Couture, is third worst in, ter in terms of plus minus, <laughs> you know, which, but, I, but even then, like the Sharks are a bad team, right? Yeah. And so, I don't know, I just get really nervous with, with all this jam jobbing going on and, 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 you know, Ian talked about it on Twitter, like, I would really hate the fact we got Jonathan Dolan over here and he's playing well for the most part, right? I would hate for him to be like, you know what? I'm out. I can't stand this Bob guy. I'm going back to Sweden or trade me somewhere else. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, dude, Dana dropping bombs up in here. Stock up. Sharks lottery odds. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> ah, well, dude, it's like you. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, my second favorite player to always trade for, his name is Cap Space. Love him, dude. The shark. You know what? The Sharks... Um... I think they're going to trade for him again this year. Yeah, I think you might be right. Uh, Lacey with the smart-ass comment of the night, uh, if I can find it here. Stock up. Sachenko had those two shutout minutes versus Edmonton a couple weeks ago. Dude, the fact that Sachenko is not getting any look, how, how does that not just speak volumes of, yeah, son, you ain't ready? Well, I, I maybe that's one way to look at it. I look at it as Bob thinks that, you know, the Sharks can maybe drag themselves into the playoffs. <laughs> Good one. Nice. Uh, how many teams do they have to leapfrog? Like five? So <laughs> Yeah, all it, of them, dude. Yeah. Uh, stock down. Noah Gregor. God, poor guy. Dude, I'm just going to – his nickname for me is going to be incel because just because no matter how much he wants it, the Chief never scores. Son. So <laughs> – oh. It, it it's kind of I, I I it's indescribable, right? Like his his shooting percentage right now is at two point one percent. The the league average is nine and a half percent, right? Mm. So like if 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 you you know you take um you take the league average uh, shooting percentage. And you apply that to how many shots on goal he's had, um, you know, if it, he would have nine goals right now if he was, if he had a league average shooting percentage, he'd have nine goals right now. <sighs> and you do that, you know, nine <laughs> nine goals, nine goals over thirty six games. Look at you just resting your laurels on that one Hedekin like tweet. 
(laughs) (laughs) Right. But it's like, okay, nine goals over 36 games. Like, you know, if you, if you take that over, um, you know, over a full season and, and for Noah Gregor, a full season would be 64 games. You know, that's how funny is it going to be like a week or so from now, or like once the trade deadline is over and the sharks have the E next to their name on the standings and all the pressures off, dude, Greg, you're going to go off, son. (laughs) (laughs) Going to have like two hat tricks in three games. Yeah. That's it. I apologize. Empty the tank. 66 games for is what Gregor can hit. I apologize, dude. That's that's 17 goals. You know, if he if he's a league average shooter, he's on pace for 17 goals, which is not bad for the ice time he's getting. Well, dude, LeBanc 17 goals. Remember Sorensen had 17 goals. I don't remember who that is. Yeah. My my point being is that like he's not bad. He's just insanely unlucky. <sighs> yeah, right now. Oof. Uh, finally Stockton again, anybody who tells you this is a playoff team, stop, stop. Yeah. Well, and we kind of talked about it one, like last week, right? Uh-huh. 2% is a chance, but if you're hanging your hat on 2%, like <laughs> you got to think about some things. Yeah. Like if you're 2% to make it to the playoffs, you know what your percentage of winning the first round is? <laughs> yeah. Just saying, uh, any other stock downs for you before we move on? Yeah, I thought, you know, Hurdle and Meyer as a pair. Who? Like, they've been, all year, they've been so dominant, right? Whoever's been on that line with them, it's it's clicked. And really this week, there have been so many times they just seem, they seem like they're trying to do everything on their own. It seems like they're getting really easily frustrated. It doesn't seem like they've got a lot of hustle to their game. That being said, this is kind of what I talked about earlier. I threw it on our notes. Sure enough. I thought Hurdle and Meyer as a pair tonight against the Kraken had a had a pretty solid game. Um, you know, obviously for 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 both of them, you know, nothing to show on the score sheet, but I thought they had good games. You know, but obviously prior to tonight, I I wasn't overly fond with their games. And it's like, okay, from Hurdle's perspective, you're playing for a contract or you're playing for a trade. Like, step it up. And from Meyer's perspective, like. You know, you you want to be the MVP of the team. You want to be the best player. Step it up. Granted, Myers had a good year all year. He's he's like he's built up so much equity that he can afford a bad game here and there. But four in a row. Yeah. Well, not about it. it makes you wonder if the pressure got to him after I don't know how many people in the media or even Bob himself just basically said, "Look," or they do, or they called out the fact that. It's, if Hurdle and Meyer don't score in a game, they don't win. So right. I wonder if they were feeling that heat. But possible. No, no changes to the module, right? Module. Module. Uh, uh, no, the top three is still the top three: Meyer, Hurdle, Couture. I, I'm just now realizing this. So we we added for those who don't know, we added the modifier to the module. There's a little bonus point if your goal is a game winner or it's on the special teams, and. As it turns out, uh, so 16 of Timo Meyer's 24 goals have been, you know, have 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 gotten some kind of modifier, Uh-oh. right? Is, is Timo asking for a recount? So he's, you know, he's starting. He's 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 scoring really big goals, you know. I mean, and that's that's why he's number one on the module. Um, there's a couple inch. I mean, Barabanov passed Carlson, uh, or I'm sorry, tied Carlson in goals this week, but passed him in terms of points because Barabanov scores when it matters most. I think we've talked about that quite a bit. A mm. um, couple little little quirks. So Scott Reedy, who got who has one goal, has the same score as Jake Middleton, who's got three. And I think this is where you're seeing the module come to play, right? Where you look at Jake Middleton two low value goals and a mid value goal that gets you to four points versus Scott Reedy. Yeah. He's got one goal, but it's a high value goal and you get the game winner modifier. So (laughs) you're starting, right. So you're, I feel like we're at the point in the season where you're starting to sort of see how some players, even if they're scoring less, maybe it means more down the road, right? You're starting to sort of see that. Well, let's, uh, move on here a few quick stats to throw at you power play has been a little better the last five four for 18 this week four for 15 but the pk perfecto 
uh, has been for quite some time. I, did, I think they mentioned it on the cast. Like they've allowed one power play goal in like the last 36 tries or something. It's been ridiculously hot. Um, they've even moved up just a scotch on, on their stats. So we got uh, the power play at 20% now. So they've moved up to 17th from 20th. PK is now second in the NHL. A week ago it was sixth, just to give you an idea of how much has changed. Saw a little bit more from the blue line this week in four games. We saw six points come from them. Last week, you'll remember, one assist out of there. <laughs> Oof. But out of 53 games, the blue line has contributed uh, 22 goals, 101 points. That is pretty damn good, especially when you consider that last season in 56 games, they only contributed 21 goals, so eh, one less, but only 93 points. So you're seeing a little bit more change there. Coming up this week, oh boy, with 29 games as of now, when we talk again, we're going to be catching you up on three Sharks games with, yes, another Pucknologist takeover of After Dark next Unbelievable. Sunday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> three weeks in a row, man. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Sharks uh, at Vegas, of course, the jerk said he'll be there to give him the bump. Yep, the jerk bump, it's real. Uh, versus the Preds, and then back at Anaheim, despite just losing to these guys in... in shoot out so hopefully look uh maybe they can get some revenge with anaheim i don't know but i don't know anaheim how we talked about it all year anaheim is the uh anaheim's the pretender right and they're pretender but they're bipolar you know one day they look great and then the next day it's like who how are they even this high in the standings sharks are five points behind them yeah you know so well john gibson bitches (laughs) Ah oh, man. So the, I'll tell you what, the nice thing about next week's takeover, it's a five PM Pacific game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can get jerk tucked in by a tidy nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, so look, the the quick hits this week, uh we'll we'll try to get through these as much as, as quickly as we can, which never happens. No, never. Um so we should just say hits. Yeah. <laughs> so look, it's all about injuries. You know, we you talked about doing the uh what was it? The autopsy on the season? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's going to be about injuries, man. I mean, you think how many, how many guys have made their first or how many rookies have they had to call up? How many, what is it? They say uh man games lost or whatever. Like, well, dude, we're, we're to the point where only Burns and Hurdle have played every game this season. Oy. So and bo- both Burns and Hurdle had the COVID this year. So, you know, the fact that they, Got very lucky with the scheduling quirk. You know what I mean? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, they, they've they said that they're hopeful that EK would, well, at least last Wednesday, Bugner was quoted as saying that they were hopeful that Eric Carlson would return in two weeks, but latest reports are saying he could, ugh, could potentially be back as soon as next weekend. We yeah, shall see. Here we go. Huh? Here we go, man. This is it. <laughs> Playoff season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, reports is that he'd been dealing with this problem since the start of the season, tried to play through it. That playing through stuff doesn't seem to work for Eric. So just like get healthy, son. What do we say? Every time an injury comes up, what do we say? If you're not good, just stay out. Yeah. Uh, he'll still miss this last week and still no real word on his return. Although he is taking uh, part of it in some way, shape or form in practice. Kevin LeBanc is skating and still looking at a two to three weeks until he returns. I really hope he has like a total redemption season when he comes back. Well, you know, Chief's married now, so you know, maybe <laughs> maybe she cracks the whip and says, "Get it together, pal. Er- earn that four point whatever mill." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, as we all know, earlier today it was announced that Mario Ferraro will be out six to eight weeks after taking that hit from Taylor Hall, uh, and then. Rudy Balser is placed on IR. So, it you know, it sucks f- for us just like even if the season is kind of a shitstorm, I don't know about Jerk. I enjoy watching Rudy Balser's and Mario Ferraro play hockey. So yeah, man. This blows. But Well, and especially cuz like it's not it, it's not, you know, it, it's not like a random player has gotten hurt. Like they're regulars. Yeah. And Dude, you want to talk as unlucky as Gregor has been with finding the back of the net? I feel like that same luck is following Balsers around when it comes to injuries. 
Mm -hmm. or COVID or whatever. It just seems like every time he takes a step forward, two steps back that have it. And it's not his fault. You know, it's like he's out there busting his ass when he gets the opportunity. But it's like it's always something. Some stupid injury, <laughs> some, you know, the Rona, whatever. It's like, oh, Jesus. Um, we talked about Jonathan Becker meeting with the media last Wednesday. Now, the day that it happened, Puck Guy and I did kind of break it all down. There was a lot to take in there. But we're just going to boom, boom, boom for those of you who uh, don't care for Puck Guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, oh, you know, we all, we we only kid with the ones that we partially no, think I are okay. No, I got you. Yeah. Uh, so, look, Becker, everybody talks about the low attendance. Becker has blamed COVID as the main reason where it's uh, people aren't comfortable being in large groups. Mass mandates, they don't want to dick with that stuff, whatnot, and said that uh, season ticket holders not coming to games has actually been the uh, biggest reason for low attendance. I, I think he is telling us the truth. That's the one part where I'm kind of like, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, but I I still, so you know, but for all those people that buy like individual game tickets mm -hmm. or things like that, uh, for me, it's that's it's based on pricing and team performance. Well, that's the thing I think, and that's what know, I'm hearing from you know friends that buy individual games or whatnot. They're just like, dude, right. I'm you know I I don't I just don't want to blow two hundred you know me and my I don't want to blow like what 120 bucks or whatever to get a decent seat, a couple beers, you know maybe a slice of pizza and a, and a I don't know something else. And like I'm, and I'm down 125 bucks, and then I watch the team. Like, I mean, oh my god, the the. Could you imagine how pissed off you would have been if you went to that Boston game and saw like saw on the shot? What was it? It was like nine shots on goal after two periods. Well, just the fact that <laughs> or 30, tonight it, it ended 37-16 in that game against Boston. Yeah, and then 40 to 24 tonight for the Kraken. Yeah, but tonight they had, what was it? Four shots on goal in the first period. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be a little pissed. Yeah, a little bit. Ugh. But even then, it, you know, and maybe this is a learned behavior from going to Sharks games and avoiding all the nonsense you're talking about. But even like the game on Tuesday, you know, uh, the the coming up against the Vegas Golden Knights, like, you know, I no no secrets divulged here, but you know, like I work in decent proximity to the arena, sure. and you know, I'm gonna get off work. I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat off strip and I'm going to park my car, you know, somewhere where I can park for free. Got to get those player cards, my guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show up to the game and maybe I'll get a bottle of water. It's, you know, the, the experience is one thing. Like you're talking about, you know, you go to the game, get, Oh man, I, I believe the, that's referred to as the jerk economy. Right. But that's the thing. But you know, it, with any, it's not sharks exclusive, any yeah. sporting event, any sport like, concerts, concerts like live live frugally like i'm thinking like i'm already trying to plan ahead like tuesday like i might wheel over to raising canes and like spend nine bucks on dinner see that's what i'm as saying. opposed to going to t-mobile arena spending nine bucks on a fucking coke like, <laughs> yeah bottled water yeah <laughs> you know so well look know. time will tell because we are hearing more and more that the city because because it's what it's the state mandates city mandates county mandates nhl mandates blah blah blah, Every, blah, blah everybody blah. has a feeling yeah but we're, it sounds like we're hearing that mandates could be lifted as soon as next weekend. There's I, I read that March 2nd yep. masks were coming down in Santa Clara County, which, funnily enough, Santa Clara County, the last California county to dump the masks. Uh, well, and one of the first to, to start it, too. Which is, I mean, I, I like, I, I'm, I'm all do whatever you gotta do, right? But I, I look at you, look at the data, right? And it's like, man, like Santa Clara County is 92% vaccinated, like they're killing it right now, like you're crushing it, you know? Yeah. Obviously, whatever you're comfortable with, do it. But I just think from that perspective, I'm surprised <laughs> it wasn't sooner. <laughs> you know what like, we're not? It. You know what we're not comfortable with? Balsers on the power play. Do it. <laughs> right. But uh, you know, I the la the the one thing I kind of wanted to say about Be the Becker thing, and we can move on. And we talked about this before, and, and the same logic applies, right, where you have people, you know, you're saying it's the high prices for all the ancillary stuff. Becker says it's the COVID. Other people say the sharks suck. It's everything. Yeah, three things can be true. 
yeah, the, like Becker says, well, COVID is impacting us. And that's probably true, but that's not the main reason. I think on ice performance is probably number one. I would mm-hmm. say the ancillary costs, like you're saying, that's probably number two or number three. I honestly put COVID somewhere in the three to five range of the priority list. I would agree with you. Because, like, I understand, again, like, you know, obviously, despite the fact that we, you know, you know, the scientists can make definitive decisions on what to do and not to do with COVID and there's a vaccine and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot we don't know, right? And so, you know, people are obviously have some trepidation about that. But at the same time, I feel like at this point, you know, with everything that's going on, like, you know, like you got, I don't, I know you've got your three shots. I got my three shots. I got a mask that lives in my car. Like I'm ready to go mask, no mask, vaccine, no mask, whatever you're asking. Green jacket, cold jacket. Yeah. Whatever you're asking of me, I'm ready for. And so I think, you know, to say that people are still nervous about COVID, I think is true, but that makes it sound like everybody in the world is still nervous. Whereas some people are obviously going to be more comfortable than others. Well, look, the truth is in the pudding, as they say. Does anybody say that? I don't know. The proof is in the pudding. Oh, okay. See, I like truth better. It sounds kind of interesting. Look, the the Sharks are going to play Nashville next Saturday. If the mandates are down by then, then I guess we'll really start to know if it was COVID or if it was performance and pricing and whatnot. And it should be noted, that's a hockey is for everyone night. So that means, booyah, giveaway. (laughs) And the next home game following that? is the return of Joe Thornton with oh, the Panthers. God. Yeah, I know. I will, I will not be watching that game for the slob fest. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> if the Sharks are smart, they, yeah, right. they promote the shit out of that. Are you going to be on After Dark that night? No, I'm going to the game. <laughs> oh, no, why am I not surprised? Yeah, dude, I got a slob in person. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see how those games draw. Right. Because Again, Saturday night. Uh, it's there's a giveaway. It's a Saturday and all that. However, the game against Florida that's a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So let's see how well Jumbo draws a crowd. Let's see if these numbers trend up as the team declines. I don't know. Uh, R- Ramon bringing up a great question: Are other events at SAP having same attendance issues? I don't know. You know that I'm not. I don't. That's a solid question. It's a great question. I. You know, it's is uh, I I haven't heard much in the way of concerts coming there, so I'm not sure if if that has been impacted for anything like that. I know that Paul McCartney, who can draw a crowd anywhere, is playing in the Bay Area in a few months, but he's playing at Oakland. So hmm hmm hmm. I don't know. That's a you know what Ramon. Thank you for bringing that up. That's something we're gonna have to take a look at. Um. Uh, but yeah so he said season ticket holders not using their tickets is a large part of the lower attendance and a point that I made as well is you know they they get paid for those from those season ticket holders even if they don't use the tickets but the Sharks lose money on the parking uh, the food and bev merch sales however the good thing that we're hearing of course is that the lower attendance will not impact how much the Sharks spend on the salary cap. So they're going to, Uncle Hasso is going to continue spending to the cap. Yeah, man. Um, our buddy 21 Puck saying, yes, in fact, other events at SAP are having attendance problems. So there you go. Uh, let me see. Ramon saying, going to the Bad Bunny concert next week. Tickets look pretty sold out. Well, again, it all depends on who's playing, what the draw is. Uh, let's see. From here. what I understand, Bad Bunny draws pretty well. Okay. Uh, majority of talk, uh, you know, is concerned the low attendance or whatnot. For your information, I had to go back. I wrote two articles back in 2015. You'll remember the season, or the 2015-2016, the season after the Sharks had missed the playoffs for the first time in, like, forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Plotner then admitted being concerned about low attendance. So this is not something new. We'll see how it goes. Uh, The one big thing that literally one big thing that everybody's excited about is the Sharks getting a new center hung display because they can't say Jumbotron because that's like 
Kleenex or Xerox or what you know. It's Band Aid. Yeah, it became such a uh, a term or so you know that that particular brand became so in use it just became synonymous with the product. So yeah, it's not Jumbotron, but either way, twice the size of the current SAP scoreboard center hung display, whatever you want to call it, Diamond Vision. <laughs> But if you look, was it, I want to say, was it Carolina? The, somebody had, had tweeted a photo, uh, the same company who was putting the scoreboard together for SAP, I guess had just recently done one for, I don't, I'm not sure if it was the Hurricanes, I'll have to go back and look, but if it's anything remotely close to this, holy shit, that's going to be nice. Yeah, some of the, some of the new screens are you know legit dude. really legit like the Av- avalanche one the tampa bay lightning one the the vegas one those all come to mind as being really nice sweet uh also mentioned the new cuda arena is coming in on time on budget will also ha- uh, host non-hockey events as well probably have 120 to 130 dates per year it'll also be used for league games of course uh if, if memory serves and the name of the arena sadly not teal town I don't know what what would we call it Teal Town Pavil- Pavilion Pavilion yeah um, so anyway the uh, new name should be announced next month and then look we we talked about all the problems or whatever we're, we're here to give you the fix uh, you want to fix attendance win that's that's job one win be a compelling team uh, better prices look you know it's it is what it is. Yeah, inflation's a bitch and whatnot, so give people a break. You know, stop charging people eighteen dollars or sixteen dollars for a beer or whatever. And and what was it like nine dollars for a coke? And you know, and and don't complain. And this is not you know spe- shark specific. This is across the board. It's a lot of franchises. I don't understand why fans don't come in here earlier and like you know eat and drink and all that. Well, for the sharks. Number one, yeah, it's the pricing. It's the, you know, when I can spend a third down the road and get a better meal, I'm going to do that. Just how it is. The other thing is, and, and Jerk, you've brought this up. I don't know about you, but when I'm eating, I like to, I don't know, sit down. Yep. Maybe have a table, something to put my food on. That's it. Like, I've perfected the walk and eat. That doesn't mean I like it, right? Hey, now. Like, and you, you go to your seat and you eat, right? Like, you know, you're, I'm a big guy. You're a big guy. Like some of those rows are pretty narrow. Wouldn't you like to be a big guy too? Right. Like some of those rows are pretty narrow and you're expected to watch the game, eat your food, drink your drink, watch out for people coming and going. Yeah. Like I, that like, would a, you know, something of resembling a mess hall like would that work for the tank i don't know but i know i would be interested in it especially if you get something really big messy like those um those cookie nachos you really want to be walking around trying to feed on those oh dude and then if you bump into somebody that's you what i'm saying end up with half of it on your jersey yep oh yeah you gotta like and it's great kevin <laughs> kevin lacy speaking your language by the way well, 750 for water at sap 750 for craft beer at orange gravity or original gravity. Yeah. No, I feel you. Um, that's But yeah, that's a key point. Now, if you're club level, plenty of places to sit and, and chow. All over the place. But, I love the club level for that reason. Yeah. But concourse, it's like, boy, if you don't if you don't get there, get a table early on those mezzanines, wherever no the, words. the carveries and stuff. And I've said this before. Look, if you're not going to allow smoking anymore, which I'm fine. But that huge platform that goes out to the the parking lot B, dude, convert it. Make it, put some tables and chairs out there. Maybe you can get uh, some some sort of uh, devices or whatever, windscreens that can help diminish the wind when it's kind of up and, you know, so it doesn't like make your food ice cold. Well, and and that's the thing, as as we've seen many times before, the sharks have no problem spending money to repurpose certain things. Yeah, so have at it, man. But yeah, that's you want to fix it, do stuff like that. Bring back some fun stuff like Zamboni races. Those were fun, you know. A little, little more audience interaction with Sharky. You know, maybe 
some pre-recorded stuff like entertain us when the puck is not you know during tv timeouts because i feel like a lot of the times during tv timeouts i'm just being bombarded with advertising Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like maybe some pre-recorded skits something along those lines uh i remember at one point a couple seasons ago weren't they doing like uh trivia or different things or they'd have everybody they'd put up like three songs and then everybody could get out their phone and then vote for the song that they wanted to hear like you know some more interaction when there's downtime mhm um but yeah i mean it just all comes down to look win better prices and get people involved and and for the love of god get give people a place to sit and eat for christ's sake <laughs> but would you call it the walk and what the walk and eat. Yeah, the, the walk and eat. Anyway, uh, for your information, oh, if you want to hear more about the whole Becker thing in, in the breakdown, again, uh, Eric and I talked about it earlier this week, so you can go check out that video if you would so like. <sighs> okay. If you're into lo- a local sports talk radio, whether KMBR, the game, whatever, um, I'm interested. Do me a favor. like Put it in the chat right now. Do you listen to terrestrial sports talk radio like KMBR the game or do you find yourself like listening to podcasts more and more and and why why are you listening to podcasts more or why do you listen to sports talk radio and while you're entering that in the chat uh if you're unfamiliar KNBR has let go of Larry Kruger and Rod Brooks from the Tom Tolbert show now I haven't listened to either of these stations in probably three or four years simply because they don't talk sharks. But Tom Tolbert was the one guy who used to do like appointment radio with Drew Remenda. It was fantastic. But I, yeah, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm wondering how people feel about that because I just, I can't, I can't listen to sports talk radio anymore that the commercials over, you know, they talk for eight minutes and then it's five minutes of commercials, talk for eight minutes, five minutes of commercials. Everything is so regimented. And when the commercials come in, I can't hit a little button and fast forward through it like I can with a podcast. So, yeah, I just, I, I feel like sports talk radio is going to be big time on the decline the more that podcasts continue. Because remember, the sports radio talk stuff. It's they've got to cover the Giants, the Warriors, the 49ers, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be those three because those are the three money makers, and they're just going to talk about them incessantly, no matter how exciting the athletics or the sharks or the earthquakes are. Doesn't matter. Those are the three that they're going to talk about. And it's the same things over and over and over. Whereas, well, what if I'm a 49ers fan, but I could give two shits about the Warriors? Well, why don't I just listen to a podcast where I know I'm going to get wall-to-wall 49ers talk because that's what I want. So, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, look, around the NHL, blah, 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 blah. anything interesting happening with the the Bolts and the Preds game? I'll be honest, I, I really didn't watch it. Me I, neither. I, I, I was, I was busy. Yeah, I was busy. Yeah. I got shit to do, man. Uh, Vancouver earlier this week rocked their black jerseys with the skate logo. Uh, which teams need to just throw it back permanently? Because we've already seen it with the Coyotes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, who else recently kind of went retro? Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Ottawa. <laughs> but, dude, I want to know who else wants to uh, needs to go retro full-time. And for those of you who don't know, Adidas is rolling out a small, a smidge, if you will, of classic jerseys. I don't know where this came from, but – what? And I don't know if they're just starting with a random five or if there's any type of a reason. And I apologize for the basketball jersey that's on there. <laughs> <laughs> but evidently rolling out Nordiques. Now, Nordiques, I get. Because, look, dude. Like, tell me if I'm wrong. Colorado's reverse retro, high, biggest in demand. It was definitely in the top five of the reverse retro there you go. So, I, I, I mean, that explains it, that Nordiques. And that looks crisp, dude. The, the Kings one, crisp. Tampa, I never really liked that jersey anyway, so I'm like, nah. In in the Pittsburgh one, I don't like it all. But everybody loves that Sharks heritage. 
I'm, I'm going to be real interested to see uh, how the sales are for this because Adidas and Fanatics are notorious for putting up something and running out of stock real fucking fast. Let, let's see how this goes. But it also makes me wonder, is this a precursor for something else? What if these, what if these Sharks jerseys sell out in a hot fucking second? Is that not like a red flag for the organization to go, you know what, maybe it's time to go back? Probably. I'm just saying. Uh, let's, you know, it's, we asked for some questions and whatnot. Let's, uh, let's hit up a couple right now. Let's see. Shaka saying, I'm listening to podcasts now more, uh, <laughs> listening to podcasts more nowadays. Not sure why, but at least they talk about the sharks on podcasts and not talk show or talk radio shows. Exactly. Uh, Jerry, just reduce prices and get people in the door. They will still buy a $35 t shirt and a $5 slice of pizza. Where the hell are you getting a $5 slice of pizza, sir? <laughs> I don't know why people keep saying slice of pizza. You know the tank sells pizza by the hole, right? Well, well, those little mini ones, yeah. But same, same. You Not get, really. you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, let's see here. Enter. Th- oh Jesus, no, Marty, we're not doing that. Uh, Jerry saying he sponsored a reach around. We don't do reach arounds on the Pucknologist. Sorry, but we appreciate your support. If there's something else we could, you know what? We'll forward that to the next show, and they can do a reach reach around just a just for you. Vancouver should do the plunging V jerseys. Can we not? <laughs> Those Nordiques ones don't have the right logo, though, right? It's there's a tweak to it, isn't there? Like it has bit, that yeah. that weird outline or something to it. Well, just the fact that the stick is not red. Yeah, like it's not perfect. I don't know exactly what they're going for here, but either way, I would st- I'd still get one. So, uh, Alex is pissed that they haven't made white available for heritage jerseys. Uh, hang on to your socks, buddy. They're coming. Let me let you know. I would say mm, six months from now, you'll probably see something. But that's just me speculating. But I'm telling you. Uh, let's see. Finally, since activating Eichel, Vegas is one, three and one LA has now pushed them to third in the Pacific division while Edmonton ha- is only one point back. Meanwhile, Anaheim's only three points back jerk. Could Vegas, I shouldn't say could Do you think Ve- Vegas might miss the playoffs. I mean, they could, but I don't think they're going to, they're still there's, I still think they're they're as good as Calgary. I think they're better than LA. I think they're better than Edmonton. They're, I mean, the fact that Vegas is hanging in there while dealing with a million injuries, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, I mean, they like they don't even have their starting goalie. They've had to, you know, they've been rolling with Laurent Brossois for, you know, a while now, close to a month. And obviously, you know, they don't have Mark Stone. They don't have Alec Martinez. Like. There's just so many regulars they don't have, right? And so, and and haven't had throughout the year. So, you know, I still think ultimately they're going to make it. And it's it's going to be the Tampa situation where they just kind of stumble their way in, and then once everything is set, there you're going to really get to see what they're all about. <sighs> Boy, that would be so much fun to see Vegas miss <laughs> just by like a point or so because L.A. and Edmonton and and you know the ones around them just blow their doors off for some bizarre reason. Maybe they stumble a little bit more and you see the central teams be like, no, we got the wild card. You all get back in your division over there. I don't know. Should be, should be fun. So how are things going for the dark horses? Uh, jerk, your, your Canucks. I mean, three game win streak. They're still bad. You're right. I mean, you know, they're they're just like the you know they're just like the sharks, the ducks, the Oilers. Like they're just in that kind of middle area of like, okay, you know, who's gonna you know who's gonna have the three game win streak this week, right? So <laughs> turns out it's Vancouver. You hey know, uh, the Kings, AJ's Kings. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah, dude, sixty five points, second in the division, three points from the top, pushing on Calgary's door, five game win streak. Hi yo. Uh, Ian's hair still safe at this point. One start from the 20 start threshold. Big fucking deal. He's still at an 898. I, I mean, dude, he'd have to what throw up like three consecutive shutouts to get that under 915. I don't know. 
<laughs> so that's it, everybody. We have your tweet of the week now. You ain't going to believe this shit. But what happens when six players don't know where the fuck the puck is? Oh, I saw this. this is hilarious. Blocked by Lozon. Seven minutes into the second, a 2 2 tie. The puck is near the center. And oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. There are six guys in the corner looking for the puck, and Travis Hamlin had it at center, and he almost scored his second goal of the game. Have you ever seen that? No. No. The ref didn't know where it was. The hidden puck trick. Here's McCann in with a shot, and Demko able to fight that one off. How? (laughs) (laughs) Just how? How did you? How did so many guys lose track of the puck? That is great. I just don't even get that. That's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. It's exactly how Vancouver drew it up. Oh, you think so? Have you seen the whiteboard? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, everybody, make sure to check out our latest one-on-ones that we've done, which you can find on the YouTube channel and, of course, on tealtownusa.com. You can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. And while you're doing that, make sure to wish him a very happy birthday tomorrow. Who? Oh. <laughs> you can follow me at AJ underscore strong. Remember to leave your take in the comment section of this YouTube video. If you weren't able to watch live for all of you who were able to join us tonight, we thank you very much for doing so and appreciate the comments that you have left in the chat. So famous last words, buddy. I don't know. I it's just, I think Anybody who was holding on to a sliver of hope uh, for this year, just, I, I, I think it's go. gone. I think it's gone, right? And you know that doesn't mean the Sharks are going to trade Barabanov. That doesn't mean they're going to trade Hurdle. But I don't know. It, it's it feels like it's trending that way. And 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 I don't know. I we're th- just we're three weeks away, buddy. Well, that's the thing. Is like like we talked about earlier. Like Barabanov should for how much he makes and for what he brings to the table, I'm surprised more people are, aren't sniffing around him. Like you read TSN fourth period, daily face off sports net. None of their trade bait boards even talk about Barabanov. So like, to, is to it, be fair though, if you notice Curtis keeps posting what scouts are showing up to sharks games. Yeah, but he does that every year, but no, trade I don't know. Bait I just, stuff, huh? the, the, the fact that, you know, those are kind of the four big sites for trade bait boards. And the fact that he's not on any of them, it makes me wonder, like, <laughs> is it, is the deal in the drawer? And they're just waiting. Oh, hmm. Could be I, that, that's based on zero inside information. I'm just guessing. All right. Uh, for me, it's, again, just, <laughs> it, it was, the, you're right where I expected you to be. And, uh, the worst team. What? With a worse team. Yeah, uh, but you're right where I expected to be, and look, it is what it is. So I can't get mad at you. But Well, you can. You would just be foolish to. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I can't get mad at you for how this season went, but maybe I can get mad that you. I don't see the roadmap or you, I don't see you making moves to uh, make the future a little bit better. But, again, three weeks to go. Three weeks to go, and that includes – Four of five versus, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, five of the next seven Pacific Division opponents. So, yeah, by the time you play that game on the 17th in L.A., you know, if if, if you don't sweep those, it's it's over. So do what you need to do. Just c- come wave to Jumbo, I suppose, on the 15th. If you're going to that game, see you there. So, as always, remember to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on social media. If you listen to the podcast on something like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, whatever, help us out. Subscribe to the content, leave us a review, five stars, whatever, tell a friend. You can find links to our social media podcast apps and more in the description below. Below, as in this season, below's. Find everything on tealtownusa.com and remember to check out After Dark following every single Sharks game. That's our show, everybody. Thanks for watching, contributing, listening. We will see you all next week for yet, yes, another takeover. 
episode 154 then. Good night, everybody.